Yes, so in fact I am Italian, so my parents are first generation Italian immigrants that moved to Canada when they were in their 20s, more or less. So I'm the first generation born outside of Italy. I was born and raised in Montreal, Canada, which is the French-speaking part of Canada. Um, so my mother tongue is Italian, I still speak to my parents only in Italian. Uh, I speak English and French because I grew up in the French part of Canada. And uh, my wife and I have been together as a couple for 29 years and she's Portuguese. So I speak Portuguese as well, yes. I have two amazing daughters and I often tell people that I'm employed by ISS but I work for my family. As a, as a human being, uh, we all have to attach our motivations, our energy, our inspiration to things that are um, far more existential and far more legacy creating than just business. So I'm a business person by day, but I think that when I leave this planet at some point in time, the legacy that I will leave behind is my children. And so I spend a lot of time with my girls to make sure that they become the kinds of human beings uh, that my wife and I want them to be and that ultimately they represent my legacy in the right way. So I spend a lot of time with my family, that's for sure. that I've spent most of my career in front of customers and um, operating in the market. So I'm not the kind of person that enjoys spending a disproportionate amount of time in the office. I believe that great businesses have a tendency to make sure that they organize around customers and market forces. So I think whether it was at Johnson Controls, whether it was at GE or at Amcor, you could always find me out in the field, just like I'm doing here in Indonesia, getting to meet our people, getting to meet our customers, and really understanding how we connect our people with our customers to be able to drive the agenda of the business. And what I would also tell people is if I were to summarize my experiences in those three companies, I think I learned sales and marketing from Johnson Controls. I think that was a terrific company from a sales and marketing perspective. I learned product management at GE. GE is a terrific product company. And at Amcor, I learned manufacturing. So I think I took away you know, a small piece to add to my basket in every one of these experiences with these great companies. And so over the course of my career, I've had the opportunity to work with and for um, you know, some terrific leaders. I've also had the opportunity to work with and for some leaders that were less terrific. And in either of those instances, you learn. And what I've seen though that permeates some of the really, really effective ones is a, a couple of key attributes. The first is most of them have an unwavering passion for the work that they do. So making sure that you're in love with the work is something that I've seen across most of the, the really effective leaders that I've worked with. The second is their ability to focus. So they have an ability to separate signal from noise and get their groups and teams really focused on few things, but doing it with focus and scale. The third is just honesty and transparency. So for me, this is mean what you say and say what you mean. The fourth, I would say, is probably discipline and execution. So the best leaders that I've had the opportunity to work with and for have been incredibly disciplined in their execution and have a high level of say-do ratio. So they say something, they do something, and those two things are always 100% equivalent. And then the last thing I would say, which has always been important to me, is the best leaders that I've had the opportunity to learn from were incredibly humble people. And with humility, you end up being the kind of leader that is open to listening, that is open to learning, and to also understanding that regardless of how big the job that you have is, that you always don't have the answers. And so it's important that you continue to be humble in the work that you do. So those, I would say, are the key attributes of the most effective leaders that I've worked with. Look, there's no doubt in my mind, it's 100% focused on being the right kind of ambassador as it relates to sustainability. And the, the reason for that is simple. If you think about the world that we live in right now, um, there's two forces that are acting on us that make it such that we have to really be concerned um, about sustainability. The first is increasing population on the planet. And then the second is, as that population increases, we all aspire to what I call wealthier lifestyles. And so we want more things, more consumption, etc. And that combination of increasing population and that population wanting to do more things creates an unprecedented demand for all things, energy and natural resources and all of those types of items. And so I think as a human species, we really have to think through how it is that we continue to inhabit this planet so that our children can inherit a planet that they can live in. And the last thing I'll say is, 
it isn't just us as humans, but it's us as business leaders deploying the gifts of the corporations that we represent to be able to drive sustainability, both social and environmental. So this to me is a key must have. It's not something that we think about when we have spare time. It's critical to the existence of us as humans, and I think critical to the success of companies. Well, look, I think that voice of customer and customer insight is the foundation to any good, successful company. If you really bring it back to basic principles, a company is born from a good idea for a product or service and a customer who values that product or service enough to buy it. So if you think about it from that basic principle, as companies get bigger and bigger, they should never lose sight of the fact that they exist to serve customers. Now, if we exist to serve customers, it's critically important for us to understand what goals our customers have, what challenges they're experiencing, what opportunities they're looking to take advantage of in their own markets. And so this is where you connect that customer's voice with our ability to develop products, commercial messages, messages of value, and ultimately the types of service experiences that we deliver with and through ISS to be able to satisfy what it is that they want and perhaps even what it is that they may not know they want, but may want in the future. So you can't have a great commercial team and you can't build a great company without anchoring it in very deep customer insights. This is why voice of customer is so important. We're gonna spend a lot of time just um, re-establishing our mindset around commercial. So I want the commercial team to have five basic principles in the back of their mind. The first is that we keep customers at the center. And that means that customers will always inform the decisions that we make as a company. So making sure that there's always a seat at the table, whether a physical seat or a figurative seat at the table for our customers so we make the right decisions. The second is, I want to design our commercial team to be lean, simple, and fast. Because I think in today's business environment, the ability to be simple and fast is a competitive advantage. The third is create an organization that is in love with learning and adaptation and change because the rate of change of business is unprecedented. And so the more we can be agile in the way we work, the better off we'll be. Fourth, I think, is really about engaging, empowering, and inspiring everyone in the enterprise. You know, we have almost 800 commercial people in the company globally. And one of the things I'd like to do is to build a community of commercial people so that we feel like one united commercial team. And then the last thing that we need to focus on for obvious reasons is just delivering results. So we've heard many times from our CEO, Jacob, that you know we want the company to be in growth mode. And in order to be in growth mode, we have to be a commercial team that says something, does something, and that the equation between what it says and what it does is 100% correlated. So you'll find me spending a lot of 2023 installing the right kind of mindset, because when we have the right people with the right mindset, we'll always be able to do anything we want. <music>